Hello, this is Chris Park. I'm going to talk briefly about um, the usage of sprites um, in rich text tags in TextMesh Pro, which is uh, what we are using. It's been integrated into Unity for the most part as an official uh, tool. They acquired the asset and uh, um, now they're building it in. Um, we, they're kind of in a transition period. We're using, at the moment, Unity 5.6. Um, the later 2007.1 version of Unity has a new uh, method of packing sprites, but I haven't really seen evidence that uh, that is too well handled by TextMesh Pro yet, or at least that it would make the uh, process any easier. In terms of actually using the sprites, um, you just do sprite name equals whatever, and um, that puts in the tag right there. Um, I think there are a few little uh, extra tags that you can, uh, yeah, you you can put in some extra um, properties on the sprite, I think, but. Uh, uh, not a lot, actually. Um, so what you wind up with, this is the, if you just search for TextMesh Pro uh, sprites, then it has information here on the sprite assets. Um, inside our modding and GUI project, uh, under assets icons, there are two relevant files here. One is for use in text, uh, which is um, this shows up as being like a bunch of little sprites, um, but this is actually one original image. I can do show and explore and have that pop up. It's just a PNG file. It's 21 kilobytes. Um, with this particular thing, instead of it being coming in as default, it's coming in as sprite 2D and UI. Then after that, rather than sprite mode being set to single, which is the default, then I've set it to multiple. Um, and then I'm not really sure what these other settings do. I cannot recall in general. Um, then under Sprite Editor, when you click that, then it has a thing in here where you can uh, individually locate the sprites and you can name them if you wish uh, directly in here. Um, you can set it to automatically uh, find them. So, so I, I seem to recall that there's a way that will automatically um, locate them, but I, I don't. Uh, I guess type automatic, yeah, grid by cell size or something like that, yeah. At any rate, it will find them, and then you can put them in there. You can give names if you so desire. and. It, you can see the positions and all that. Um, no, I don't want to make any of those changes. We then have a TextMesh Pro asset, which is referencing this Sprite Atlas. You just drag that right in there and it does it. It's got a default material that it's always using. And then um, what, huh, what we can do then as we say, okay, um, you've got these IDs here that it's automatically found from inside there. And um, you can say, give it a specific name. So when we have, when I click in here, this name metal is where that came from. Um, it looks like there's some other things you can do, like having, you know, fallback sprite assets and so forth. Um, where it's able to chain together multiple. Um, that's a really good thing because normally it would look in the resources folder, but we can't use the resources folder because we have to put this in an asset bundle so that people can edit these at will. And there's a lot of problems that this creates because we can't just arbitrarily create files and have them get read in and found. 
um, with the source code version of TextMesh Pro, which we do have, we could make some edits and um, and and make it so that we're able to read it out of asset bundles instead of out of the resources folder. But um, we're not really using that at the moment because it's a real pain trying to get the latest updated version from them. And uh, yeah, we could do that if we need to. Um, the other con with that is that uh, for every particular um, mesh that winds up being, or not mesh, but uh, texture that winds up being used in a given bunch of text, you're going to get another draw call for each one you use. It's really in our best interest to keep the number of icons. It, it, the number of icons doesn't even matter, but to keep all the icons in one file, um, because that's going to be the most efficient thing. Now, we lose some flexibility for users, and that's a pain, and that's something that I haven't figured out yet. Say, what if, you know, Badger Badger wants to add an icon somewhere that gets added in rich text. There's not a super good way for him to do that right now, because if he replaces these files, then um, he's going to wind up with that getting overwritten the next time that, that we do a push. So um, at some point, we'll need to figure out a better way of that. but. Um, there's enough that's evolving right now with uh, a lot of the 2D sprite stuff that Unity's doing in 2017.1, uh, which is out now, and 2017.2, which is in beta uh, and comes out in September, I believe, that I haven't been real excited about jumping on that. Uh, the latest version of TextMesh Pro is from um early july and so i kind of wonder if they're going to make something new as well that kind of responds to 2017.1 um <laughs> and so right now it's a little bit of a pain to set up and to try and extend and i'm not i'm kind of wanting to play a waiting game on that a little bit because i think that will solve itself via external vendors. Uh, if it doesn't, then there's certainly some things that we can do, uh, mainly because we have we bought TextMesh Pro when it was an external asset, the Pro version, and um, so we have you know a license for the source code. Um, so if push comes to shove, we can always you know go that route. Um, right now. Uh, the way this is set up in order to avoid uh, using, um, having to use the resource bundles under TextMesh Pro, under, I guess it is under resources, you've got TMP settings. Uh, here you've got the default font, um, and then there's a default sprite asset down in here. And click that. This is the one that is in use. This is what I, um, it created as something that would that we would use. So, um, yeah, it's not my favorite thing. We've got kind of the intersection of three different systems by three different people. We've got our systems in general with how we're doing the GUI uh, and our need for asset bundles. We've got TextMesh Pro and what they're trying to do to make things straightforward. And then we've got Unity itself. And so, TextMesh Pro and Unity are currently in the process of making themselves work increasingly better together now that they've hired that guy. And um, at some point, I think they're actually going to deprecate TextMesh Pro from being an asset store thing and just make it part of Unity. I think that's kind of their end game there. Um, they've been doing that with some of the more popular, more useful assets that are just, you know, people would remark, this should be part of Unity, you know. And then uh, you've been going, hmm, you're right. All right, we're going to hire that person, buy their asset, and have them start working on the internals of this and bringing it in. Timelines for that are uncertain, and we can't base you know, our um, 
game's usability or modability around those sort of timelines. So, so I don't know what to say on on that particular thing. Um, there are some ways that we can get around that. Um, if we need me to get the source code version um, off their forums and stuff, um, sooner than later, I can certainly do that. Um, otherwise, if we're just looking to have more icons that are part of the official game at the moment, then it would just be a matter of um, putting more inside this uh, particular file. Now, I've got a, uh, let's see here. I've got a, a under game data, um, external icons. We've got for use in, for use in text.tps, which um, if you click that, if you've got the, um, um, what is this thing called? This is the texture packer. Um, if you've got that tool, then you can just drag and drop some more in, or it'll actually read ones out of the for use in text folder automatically. So you can just put them in there. And then when you create this and hit um, publish sprite sheet, then it'll do so. Then it creates an XML file, which is not actually readable by Unity, which is all sorts of fun. Um, so if you want to get more stuff in there um, in the short term, this is how you would do it. If somebody like Badger Badger wants some icons in there, um, we'd have to do it as part of our official, you know, wrapping this in as part of an official release. For somebody truly doing modding, that wouldn't be too super friendly for now. I'm kind of tempted to wait until at least late September or maybe into October before we really try and address people adding um, extra icons in, through a separate workflow, just because I think those problems will be solved for us. So in the meantime, if anybody needs an icon added, then what we would need to do is just come over here, put for use in text, open up the Text Mesh Pro thing, um, or the not Text Mesh Pro, sorry, Texture Packer thing, hit publish. That will update this file automatically. It will stay in multiple mode and all that. You probably have to go into the sprite editor and have it um, automatically find where things are. It's pretty good about that because it's there's gaps of um, of uh, transparent pixels, and so it's it's pretty good about that. And then coming into here and then filling out more stuff here. Um, I've never tried to add something new to it. I've only ever done it um, as a first setup process. So I don't really know how that's going to work. We'll find out. The first time you go with the uh, TextMesh Pro uh, under Window and do Sprite Importer, and at that point, then you take a Sprite data source. Um, Hmm. Well, that's interesting. That is actually kind of suggesting that we could. I don't know what I, I don't know what these things are. Huh. Um. Import format texture packer. I'm not really sure how that works. TextMesh Pro is not documented as well as I would, you know, really prefer. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can. Yeah, great. Um, oh, that's right. The data source thing. They want you to. They want you to. I don't know. I I don't recall. It was a. It was a. Pain in the rear, but there's a tutorial about it, and there's some videos about it uh, that I didn't make. And so, yeah, it's a bit on the kludgy side. Um, the reason I like Text Mesh Pro so much is because of its rich text and text kerning and downright, you know, efficiency core things. The um, sprite um, insertion was kind of a more recent thing that they were then figuring out 
And with Unity redoing how they're handling sprites, yeah, that just throws an extra monkey wrench into things. So, you know, that's not as good as it could be. Um, if you're wanting to get any of these other sprites, the ones that are in, like, the ships, for instance, then what we need to do is uh, move those over into for use in text. And probably that means you're going to want me to make a white version of those that doesn't have, that don't have uh, um, this default red coloring. Um, in terms of doing um, colorized ship icons and so forth in line in text, that's really not going to be a feasible thing um, in the short term. Uh, let's see, what did I do here? I do have all of these things which I created, which you can use not in line in text, but you can use just as GUI icons. And it creates them and lets you use them. Um, uh, you can see on the sidebar how it is you're able to use those. That's using a, um, so like if I look at the, it is the do, 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 in game outline sidebar. Um, it's looking for files with this pattern of name. And so then it's loading these and putting them into sprite mark levels. These are actually Unity Engine sprites. It preloads all that stuff. So you can just do window game outline bar that's sprite mark levels to pull specific sprites. And um, here, let me sprite backgrounds, I think. Um, You've got all these different uh, wrappered Arc and Unity images that it's able to to put in uh, these individual sprites. Now these get Atlas as well, which is pretty cool. But they get Atlas in a <sighs> Unity fashion, and um, that's some Voodoo Black Magic in 5.6 and before. But in 2007.1, what they're doing is they've got this new sprite atlas thing where you can just go and you create a thing called like game atlas like this and then you can start dragging those things in the actual images that you want and they could be multi or single um components which you then put in so um for these sort of components um once we upgrade to 20 2017.1 then that becomes a whole lot less voodoo black magic. And whether or not that's something that we can really translate over into Text Mesh Pro or not, I don't know. Um, so uh, there's, yeah, I mean, that's how at the moment I'm using things. There's no ability to do shaders on these in terms of saying, like, do a color shift. Um, so that's why we have allied, enemy, and mine, and white versions of these things. Um, if you were wanting to use one of the white ones, uh, you know, like the white ones inside the um, main uh, inline text stuff, then what we need to do, I guess let's go ahead and do it. Why not? It's not going to hurt anything. Um, so we go, I'm going to show details just so I can get only the ones I want. Um, we've got all these guys. And then uh, and for use in text here, I guess these will just be big. And then um, probably we want the flare. I'm going to bet at some point we're going to want the flare. It's, it's, it's inevitable. So. So let's do it. Um, so we have all these guys in there now. They're all mixed together. Ooh. Um, 
gosh, I hope we don't want the borders. I'm going to assume we don't want that. Um, and then we've got all of this stuff, which is a whole bunch of different things. Um, let's let's take the what is it? Oh boy. I'm gonna open that whole thing for this one. We'll take these basic mark levels. And that should be good. All right. So then now go under external icons for use in text. TPS. Have your report in soon, please. <laughs> um, all right. So we do save project so these things all stay stacked in here. Publish sprite sheet. Go ahead and close that thing. I'm in here. It reloads this image. So now we've got this in here. It's now 599 by 599. Really? Where's your extra pixels here? Um, I guess I didn't say power of two. I could have sworn I said power of two on this. Um, this should be power of two. We want the extra. Let's see here. Trim mode, none. Definitely none. Shape padding, two. Yeah, that's good. Um, keep transparent pixels. Max size, yeah. Oh, come on now. I guess it's under basic settings, probably. Oh. Where was that? Power of two. Okay, not word aligned. Power of two. There we go. Okay. Um, that creates a pretty wastefully large image, but um, okay. There we go. Don't force squared the power of two on. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's better. Now we come in here, we see this, and we've got 512 by 1024. Um, that's much, much, much happier. All right, so then now we've got this thing is, uh, not showing us anything useful here. So let's revert. You can tell I've done this like a million times, right? All right, so that's single. Now we'll do multiple sprite mode. Come on. Method, delete existing, pivot on the center. Yes, okay, slice. All right, so here we go. So that's an action. There uh interface for this is pretty atrocious in a lot of ways so okay there we go now everything has its own proper setup here all right um good it detected everything fine so we hit apply close this thing yeah yeah and now this thing is flipped out because, hey, there's no um, sprite info here. Um, so let's see. I think I can drag and drop this in. So this was fuel. So fuel is this one. Come on. I can drag. Nuts. Oh, that's pain. All right. Well, let's do this then. 
Let's see about our dear old Sprite importer. Um, texture packer, create Sprite asset. Come on now. Empty name is not valid. Or, yep, definitely not that. Um, I sure wish I remembered how to do this. Um, yeah, so uh, sprite importer is all sorts of useful. Um, oh, yeah, that's useful too. I really hope that this gets more straightforward in the future versions. Um, what I'm going to do is revert this for now because that is an enormous pain in the rear. Um, but I guess at least we've learned what an enormous pain in the rear it is. I'm going to leave the actual original document um, the way that it is. Uh, the What I was doing in the texture packer, I'm going to leave that. Because next time we compile it, we're going to want something along those lines. But at any rate, this is where things are right now, which is a mess. Um, any other sort of icons you want to use, it's super straightforward. Because you just put these things in here and set them to be in the Arc and Asset bundle. And set a texture type to that people, Badger Badger, whoever, can put these things in wherever. And then you just um, reference them by name like this. And in the case where the bracket, zero bracket, is um, that would be the, the file name here. And so you go and you find those things. And then you uh, load Unity Sprite from bundle. In that fashion, you say the bundle name, and in this case, Arc and UI, and then you put that thing in, and um, you can load it into the Arc and images that way. So if you're not trying to put it in line in text, if you're not having to use the Text Mesh Pro stuff, this is easy peasy, and it's super moddable, and anybody can do it. If you're trying to put this stuff in line in text, it is painful. Um, it's something that we definitely want to be able to do, um, mainly for things like icons along those lines, uh, like, you know, we're going to want to put, um, you know, like Civ five or six, where you want a little like resource icon in line. Um, that's why I started with those, um, for other things where we wanted to like draw graphics, you know, um, you're really not going to want to put those in line too much. You also get a lot less flexibility when you're putting it in line in terms of uh, how exactly it offsets and that sort of thing. Um, because you can say, you know, what is the advance? What is the, um, let's see here. Uh, you can say, I guess I didn't really use that. I could have sworn that I did. But adjusting um, what the height is and how they fit in the in the line of text, um, you can set that up here centrally once. But if you want that to work differently in different different lines of text, good luck with that. <laughs> um, you know, I had built something slightly more flexible with our old text handling, but that required a whole bunch of other problems. So um, it's not an easily solvable problem is really what it boils down to. Um, and I'm glad that Unity hired the guy that was doing such wonderful things with text in general, and hopefully with more access to the internals of Unity 
he can solve that problem in a way that makes things easy for all of us. Um, in the short term, AKA like the next year, I'm not really counting on that. Um, that'll be nice for 2018 or 2019 maybe. But uh, you know, I, I don't even see that on the roadmap yet. They hired the guy, he's doing some stuff. He's still updating TextMesh Pro, um, but he's also doing something behind the scenes, but they've put nothing on their roadmap. So we'll see what happens. Um, so um, that is an example of kind of what to do, what not to do. Um, uh, questions, as I'm sure there might be, then please just let me know.